Hello, this is going to be a short little episode. I normally don't like to do self-promotion, but I think this is so cool that I have to do a little bit. I guess it is the Light Source Engraving channel, so I should promote Light Source Engraving just a smidge. If you haven't saw them by now, I've made some rotary table jigs that will work with Lightburn version 1.4 when it is released with the repeat marking feature. They'll currently work with EasyCAD. But what these do, as you can see, this is my standard chuck rotary 80 millimeter. With it vertical, I can place these on top of it. This will do pens and pencils. You can see the vice jaws in those three holes. If you already have a rotary table with an aluminum pen and pencil top, these jigs will bolt to your existing aluminum rotary table. That's important for the next one, which is the business cards and wallet jig. That brings me to the next jig, which is the jig for the business cards and wallet. It holds six business cards or six or six RFID wallets. It does have a cutout in the back for the money clips on the RFID wallets. It has finger cutouts, so you can easily pick those up. So they do just pop right out. So as I showed on the pen and pencil jig, these three holes are designed to allow your jigs to set on an existing rotary table, which is the aluminum with the pen and pencil cutouts and it's all threaded and has the six holes at the top. So if you have one of those, this one will fit on it and will bolt down. It has been tested. I had a tester to test everything out and make sure everything worked. So that's these. So now let me show you something else cool. So what do you do if you have these awesome jigs and you don't have the flexibility of a transformer, which is what I refer to my new laser smart two as I call it the transformer. If you haven't saw my series on that, please go check it out. It's a really cool design. The tower will rotate 360 degrees. The laser path slides back and forth, give you all kinds of flexibility, such as using a 300 lens or a tumbler. All you have to do is rotate it off the side of the bed, set your tumbler up, and you've got extra clearance even with a shorter tower. But if you're stuck, I have a solution for you. Sean Preston has designed a rotary table extension and I just quickly made a 3D designed bracket, L bracket, you can use with your standard rotary. You attach two of those, use the rotary table extension, and you've got plenty of clearance out from your tower in order to fit the rotary table underneath your galvo head. Let me show you that. It's pretty cool. And you can see how it's fastened. So what we have here are 3D printed jigs, basically cup jigs, which is actually two two jaw vices on a modified base plate that I modified to specifically fit on these rotary jigs. And that vise was created by Sneaks over at Printables. I'm gonna put a link in the description to this vise. I remixed it to 75% with one base to hold two separate vices. You could use this base to hold the other versions of the vise scaled down to 75%, or you could increase my base by 25% using it on a full size. But either way, I'll link that in the description. Then you see I have my laser in its usual position. And by having it in the usual, usual position, I have the Galvo centered on the bed. To use this rotary in this fashion, I would need some extra room out here. Well, Sean's rotary extension plate mounts right to your laser bed. And then it also has mounting holes so you can line your rotary up far back if you need to. The holes are threaded and if this rotary was mounted in the typical way and not sitting on the motor, it could just mount it right to the base. Instead, I'm actually mounting it with my little 3D printed brackets. Really don't support anything. They just keep the rotary from spinning itself as the table is spinning. So it just keeps it in place so it doesn't move. This is the wood version of the jigs with the three millimeter plywood. It is having no issue supporting the weight of the 
vices and the tumblers. We'll be showing footage of it running with my CO2 Galvo. You'll see this rotary bolted down, fastened to the CO2 Galvo. And then I'll show footage of it actually running light burn cylinder correction, as well as light burn repeat marking at the same time. All right, so here we are with the CO2 Galvo. I have my cup positioned earlier. in this fashion so it was directly under the galvo and i was able to use those two brackets to secure the rotary so it didn't spin and i made sure that the motor was square to the laser table and then by not having the rotary in the total vertical position uh, including the base i was able to save some height and have plenty of clearance to run the tumblers on the co2 galvo with plenty of room to spare so you can see we still have another 50 millimeters to spare clearance wise so i'll be able to do taller water bottles as well as the smaller diameter tumblers but here you can see how it's fastened motor is square and it worked just fine with light burn cylinder correction and repeat marking at the same time you can mount it this way you can use a rotary extension mount it off the side if you needed to mount it out here or out here so i tried to come up with as many options as possible to hopefully accommodate the wide range of lasers that are out there everyone can have an opportunity to use these jigs with their standard 80 millimeter rotary chuck put light burn repeat marking to use in a more production style environment so save you a little bit of time running six business cards at once you could do something else while it's running you can run three tumblers at once and while your fiber lasers working on those you can be working on graphics for your next project whatever the case may be but hopefully it'll save some time and speed up everybody's production because we know time is money and hopefully it saves both but anyway, that's enough of my self-promotion for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, just showing some of the stuff I've been working on over the last uh, few weeks. Again, the vice was from Sneaks. At, it's posted at Printables. I'll put the link in the description. I will send my revisions of the vice to Printables as a remix, so those files are up there at no cost. However, if you do want them printed because you don't have a printer, I do have permission to print those and offer them for sale for those of you that can't print them out. Um, otherwise, the files are available. They'll be free on printables. So I'll eventually get a link to that as soon as I get those um, packaged and uploaded. So that's basically all I have for today. I do have a Patreon. I appreciate those that are already Patreons. The extra is really helping me to buy supplies for testing. Um, I'm continuing to test 3D acrylic. I think I have 3D slate down and it's ready to go. And 3D uh, brass and metal, aluminum, steel, that's no problem. Uh, as soon as I have the acrylic settings nailed, I want to do a complete 3D video. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to have a free STL file. I'm going to show you how to convert it to a PNG and how to use that in Lightburn. So stay tuned. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you get notification when that video comes out. But the free file is going to be 
from someone who I've uh, partnered with to make this available to everyone. And man, when you see their selection of STLs available for purchase, it will blow your mind. It's awesome work, the files are excellent. So stay, stay tuned for that. The first thing I mentioned was my Patreon. Now, head on over to Laser Makers Realm, subscribe to that channel. Each video is associated with a free file. We also have question and answer live streams every two weeks. We just had one this past Sunday. The next one will be in two weeks. Stay tuned to those, subscribe, hit the bell, like the videos, all that good stuff, please. Also check out my friend Gio over at Maker Theory. Link to his channel is in the description. We are going to be doing a video soon, working with our MOPA lasers and testing for collars. So that will be a fun collaboration that you'll be able to participate in soon. I have an 80 watt MOPA with a two millijoule max peak pulse energy. But that's enough of my self promotion for today. Thank you for tuning in. As always, have a great day. I appreciate everyone tuning in and watching. Thank you very much.